I'm Chris Stevenson, this is Strange Assembly, and I'm here with another V5 Vampire the Masquerade lore sheet spotlight. Lore sheets are some of my favorite flavor bits in V5, so in these lore sheets spotlights, I just pick one lore sheet, talk about a little bit about the flavor behind it, talk about the mechanics of it. Today, I'm talking about Eletria. Eletria is from Chicago by Night. She's, I think, gets more attention in V5 than she got before, but she has been around since early Chicago by Night. And this lore sheet is from Let the Streets Run Red. This was one of the supplements that spun off of the Kickstarter for Chicago by Night. To the best of my knowledge, the way to get it now is to go to Drive Through RPG and either order it as a PDF or a print on demand. Unlike Chicago by Night itself, I don't believe Renegade has announced plans to do a traditionally printed physical version of this. Anyhow, the lore sheet. Eletria occupied an unassuming position amongst Chicago's kindred for decades prior to her recent disappearance. Few understood the immense power hidden behind the quiet strength of the enigmatic vampire that dotingly watched over Portia all those nights. Fewer still realize that Eletria was once Prince of Vera Cruz and one of the most talented artists in history. Born of Sparta, reborn of Helena, Eletria traveled the world, drowning herself in life's myriad pleasures and always returning, panting for more. Painting, sculpture, and music came effortlessly to her. The kindred of Vera Cruz bent their knees to her will and were better for her presence. Her very passions conquered the hearts of all who met her ensnaring Loden's sire, Datura, and then Loden himself, loving and losing both in the process. Her presence in Chicago had the potential to change everything, but in the end, she changed you. You knew Eletria. It might have been Chicago, Vera Cruz, or someplace more distant still, but you knew her. Lover, friend, subject, or slave. Her presence haunts you to this day. That's a pretty good summary. She's born and then embraced in Sparta, in the vicinity of 100 BCE. This is well after Sparta's heyday. This is after Rome has conquered the joint. She's rich. She's an artist. When she gets embraced by Helena, she is almost immediately bloodbound and basically spends the next 2,000 years or so bloodbound to Helena. She mostly disappears off the map until the 15 when Helena drags her across the Atlantic Ocean. One of her functions, and this will be relevant, is that Helena needed other vampires to feed off of, because even at this point in time, Helena had long ceased to be able to subsist on the blood of mortals. Eletria ends up as the prince of Veracruz in what is now Mexico. It is she who encourages Datura to embrace Olaf Holte, who will later become Loden. She then encourages him to go off and seek his fortunes in Chicago, which he does. And you have this extensive conflict against the Sabat because, right, this is Mexico. The Sabat was basically in control of Mexico prior to V5. But then after the events of basically the first few Chicago books, Loden is seemingly destroyed. Helena calls Eletria from Veracruz to come tend to her in Chicago. More recently, Helena is affected by the beckoning. As we know, she goes off, she commits mass diablery to break the beckoning, comes back, and Eletria is so horrified by what Helena has become, I don't know why after all of these times, but whatever, she's able to break her blood pond, attacks the weakened Helena, and escapes to Indianapolis, better known as that place that I go every year for Gen Con, the best four days in gaming. She's in Indy, she's running a bar, you can find out more about that in Let the Streets Run Red. It's unclear what Eletria will do from here, right? She's tried to contact Datura, who's still in Veracruz. She yearns to go back to Greece. She feels obligated to continue and work against her sire in Chicago. She's just kind of out there. So that's the flavor of Eletria. Like, like I said, she's not a tremendously significant lore character, but I like the character and her minor role. I like the lore sheet. So... The one dot power on the lore sheet is Muse. Eletria sees great potential in you and fans the embers of your talent. All craft, painting, craft, sculpture, and performance music tests have their difficulty reduced by one. Realistically, I should be somewhat outraged by this. 
If you go back to V20, there's a tradition of this collection of merits that cost one dot and then reduced the difficulty of all of your rolls with that particular skill by two. Those are ludicrously broken. They're so much more powerful than adding another dot in the skill. I literally, if you play in a game with me where I'm the storyteller and we're playing V20, I won't let you take those merits. They're that stupid. And really, I should feel the same way about this too. Reducing a difficulty by one is way more powerful than buying another dot in a skill. If you already have three in craft, for example, and you want to take a fourth dot, that's 12 XP. Buying this is like taking two more dots, and it costs three XP. Now, to be fair, this is not literally every single use of craft or every single use of performance, right? Those are both very broad skills that cover a variety of activities. But for a lot of characters, if the thing you do with craft is painting or the thing you do with performance is any sort of music, this is way better than buying a skill dot. So I like this because I like making characters who engage in these sorts of activities and... It's not like getting a difficulty break in technology or stealth or brawl or something where it has a massive mechanical impact all the time. So objectively, I should be saying that this is way too good. Subjectively, I end up liking it. Uh, So the second dot is Portrait of a Woman. Aletria has entrusted you with a rare and precious piece of art of deep importance to her. It could be her cherished portrait of Datura on the cliffs of Veracruz, or another painting, sculpture, or piece of music created by her hand. Datura is a woman, so presumably that's the woman referenced in the portrait of a woman. Granting you this piece is a sign of her deepest trust and contains an almost literal part of her soul. Once per chapter, you can spend an hour meditating upon this piece and make a resolve plus craft, or resolve plus performance test at difficulty four before resting for the day. If successful, you awaken having recovered all superficial willpower damage. Now, a couple of mechanical things. Those are resolved craft or resolved performance checks that use your specialties in music or painting or sculpture. So you get an extra die on that. Also, note that these are the type of roles that have their difficulty reduced by the one dot muse. So if you have muse and portrait of a woman, This is actually a difficulty three test. Finally, it says once per chapter. I don't know why they sometimes use a different word. As far as I can tell, chapter just means session. So this is once per session. So once per session, if you actually go to sleep, you can recover all superficial willpower damage. This is a potent lore sheet power. Your usual willpower recovery is once per session, get willpower back equal to your highest of composure or resolve. If you're moving at a decent clip, this ability more than doubles that, likely. If you're taking advantage of it, that's quite good. If you're a character who's good at these things, you're probably not going to miss that difficulty three roll, especially because if you have any unmarked willpower boxes, you can spend the willpower that you're about to recover in order to get this back. Now, it's not perfect if you are in one of those games where sometimes you have nights that last three sessions, you just can't reuse it over and over again. Honestly, that's fine. It's quite powerful enough as it is. The thing that I like about this is that it really lets you it lets you play with your willpower anymore. Maybe other people do this anyway, but I'm kind of twitchy about burning down to not having all that much willpower left. One, because a big important roll might come up where you need it, but also if you have to roll willpower, you're rolling your current willpower, not your willpower stat. But this just gives you a lot more freedom to just really lean into using your willpower to do exciting stuff, which I enjoy. Again, this is quite powerful. It is more than worth the two. In fact, there's probably, you could swap, you'll hear when I talk about it in a second, you could probably swap the second and third power, and that would, I think, probably be closer to the actual value of these, but they're at least exciting to take. The three-dot power is, this is Sparta. 
You served under Eletria in Vera Cruz during her war against the Sabbat, or fought by her side during the War of Chicago. You gain a bonus die to all investigation, academics, and occult roles related to defending your city against hostile sect incursions. So first, you have to be in a campaign that uses hostile sect incursions. Most campaigns don't do that. If I look at Chicago, there's Anarchs and Camarilla there. I'm not even sure this even applies in Chicago. Maybe you want to take it broadly, and any time you're making a roll against someone of another sect, you get this. But most campaigns don't involve Sabbat invasions or other sect invasions. So you have to make sure you're in the right campaign. Then academics and occult roles, those are relatively obscure in this sort of thing. There's not a lot of using academics to fend off the attacking Sabbat. So mostly this is a bonus to investigation. It's only that investigation. It's not if you're trying to notice something. It's not if you're in a fight with someone. It costs three dots, so nine experience. You're almost certainly better off just buying a third or fourth dot in investigation than you are in taking this merit. So interesting, but underpowered at the at the cost. The four dot option on the Eletria lore sheet is Ageless Beauty. You shared blood with Eletria and inherited a measure of her ability to see the past. You can see a person as they were at any point in their life or unlife. If artistically inclined, you can render kindred as they appeared centuries ago with shocking accuracy. You make a wits or resolve plus aspects test. Difficulty at the discretion of the storyteller depending on how far back you're trying to look. Success means you've captured a photographic image of the subject in your mind with perfect accuracy, and then you would get two bonus dice to a relevant craft test, craft painting, craft sculpture, right, to replicate it. You can use this ability only once per session. I don't know why this needs a writer that you can only use it once per session. The most straightforward uses of this, it costs substantially too much. Being able to make a painting of an old vampire or see what they used to look like, that's interesting. That's worth something. Is it worth 12 experience? I can't imagine how. You do have some possible ability to use this as kind of a spying tool? Is your storyteller going to let you see, I would like to see what that person looked like three nights ago at 3.47 a.m.? Maybe? You're paying a lot for this. I'd be inclined to let you do something about that. You might be able to use this as kind of a backdoor investigation in that manner. If you can't really milk it like that, I, I, I don't know how you can justify paying for this And it's a cool flavor thing. I wish it was just cheaper. And then finally, the five-dot power is conspicuous consumption. Your search for Eletria leads you to Helena. You become part of the circle of vampires used to slake her thirst and keep the beckoning at bay. This arrangement is not without its benefits, as you gain five dots to distribute between Mala, resources, allies, herd, and contacts. You also have access to Helena once per story, although she has compelled you not to reveal her presence. If lucky, your perilous association may reveal Eletria's fate. So this has some upsides and some downsides. The first downside is that it doesn't really have anything to do with Eletria. This is really something that should be on like the Helena lore sheet. The second downside is that most of what you're doing here is just spending five dots on this to get five dots in other backgrounds. I'm not a big fan of lore sheets that do that. I mean, I'm sure there's plenty that you can do here. Like, I, you, your Mala, presumably, maybe it's Helena herself. That doesn't quite eat up everything here. Or maybe it does. It's Helena. It probably should eat up everything if you have her as a Mala. You can always take resources. Everybody can benefit from herds. I'm less excited about getting allies and contacts from this because I think those are more interesting to develop organically, at least after character creation. Maybe you took this at character creation and then you can just build them up yourself. But it's a little boring. But but I do like the flavor of it. It gives you a tie to this interesting character in Vampire the Masquerade. And in a way that is not entirely beneficial to you, being one of the people that the super powerful Methuselah uses as a blood bag from time to time is not without its downsides, right? It gives you access to Helena once per story in addition to the five dots. Now that's access. If your storyteller is playing this straight, 
that should not necessarily mean that she helps you. Like, maybe she'll help you, but only if you agree to her favors, that sort of thing. Maybe she'll give you information, but she's going to win something in return. Likely more than the I'm your blood bag that got you access in the first place. Kind of like the first one. I, I feel like, objectively, I should be more grumpy on this one, because all of the value is just getting background thoughts, which is boring. But I like the flavor, so... I'm just fairly rosy on this one, despite the obvious power level variances that go on with the Eletria lore sheet. Anyhow, that is lore sheet Eletria. It was printed in Let the Streets Run Red, which, as I mentioned earlier, I believe you can only access on drive-thru RPG unless you participated in the Chicago by Night Kickstarter, but it, it is just available there for a reasonable PDF download. If you've enjoyed this, I would always appreciate it if you do all those YouTube interaction things. Subscribe would be especially nice, but hey, notifications, like it, comments, let me know what you would like the next lore sheet to be, let me know why you think I got this lore sheet horribly wrong, that sort of stuff. But until then, I'm Chris Stevenson, and this is Strange Assembly. Never stop gaming.